Well, I think if you boarded an aircraft, say at Charles de Gaulle, when you leave Paris, you'd be extremely worried if the pilot in the cockpit of that sophisticated Airbus or Boeing had the controls that the Wright brothers had a hundred years ago. In other words, he was looking at a cockpit of very few instruments, of very few ways of understanding, is he going in the right direction, flying the right altitude, covering the right distance. And yet we have this modern economy, which is so sophisticated, and we've seen it uh, blow up with the financial crisis in ways that we don't really understand, which is just simply guided by these instruments such as GDP or other the, or these other basic measures that give us very little information about where we're going. So in a sense, we have a very complex global economy, very complex national economies, flying on the instruments that we were inventing 70 years ago as economists. And we just need more instruments in the cockpit, particularly around human development, to understand the course and direction that we're going. So 50 years ago, or even 30 years ago, we very much had the vision of technocrats like myself. I'm a technocrat, an economist having full information about where the economy should be going, where the aircraft that constitutes the economy should be flying. But increasingly, we've been talking about participatory development over the last 30 years. So that actually the passengers on the aircraft, the passengers in the economy, particularly poorer people, have a role in defining where the society is going. And in that sense, the information shouldn't just be flowing to the technocrats, about where this economy is going, where this aircraft is going. It should be flowing to the passengers, to the people, because they have an important democratic role in deciding what are the values and objectives that society should be following. Should we be going for broad-based growth in the sense of absolute poverty reduction, or should we be going for broad-based growth or inclusive growth in the sense of inequality reduction? What do we mean by the good life? And different societies will define that in different ways. The conversation around a Parisian table about what constitutes the good life will be different to the conversation around a dinner table in um, Sao Paulo or in uh, Istanbul or in uh, Dar es Salaam because different societies define progress in different ways. But however they define progress, they need the metrics and the data and the people to actually measure that progress. Otherwise, they're like pilots of a sophisticated aircraft who don't really know where they're going with an uninformed electorate, an uninformed populace. And if you have that, then you have the narrative about where a country is going being taken over by all kinds of perhaps dark and evil forces. The main takeaway is from this conversation we've had at this conference in Paris is that actually we do have the tools and techniques to better measure the quality of life, to measure human progress. But too often we do not have the basic data to feed into those measures. And without that investment in data, without a political concern for data, that sees data as part of social progress, then we are not going to advance as fast as we can in developing societies in ways which are inclusive and democratic and provide freedoms for every citizen. <laughs>